Lesson 2, Installation and Configuration. In this lesson, you will learn how to download NiFi off the Apache NiFi website, how to install it onto your local hard drive. We'll go over the various directories in the NiFi uh, expanded directory structure. We'll edit a uh, NiFi property file and see how it uh, affects on the NiFi GUI. You'll learn how to start NiFi. We'll go over the NiFi GUI. We'll create a simple data flow where we'll have NiFi generate a data file for us, and then we'll save that file to the hard drive. We'll go over some of the data flow basics, how to create a data flow, how to monitor data flow. And then we'll finally go over on how to stop NiFi. OK, for this lesson, I'm going to be doing everything in a demo directory. We'll be running in a Windows environment. So if you want to just follow along, you might want to create yourself a demo directory to go ahead and kind of copy what I'm going to show you here. All right, the first thing to do is to go, let's download NiFi. So let's do a Google search on NiFi download. And we'll go ahead to the Apache NiFi download website. And there's the website. So this is where you go to go ahead and download NiFi. There's also a documentation tab that has uh, screencasts, which is pretty good. And if I put together some screen uh, video instru instruction videos, which are pretty good. So let's go ahead and download our binary. So Windows, we're going to install in a Windows system. So we're going to click on the binary download. Go to this HTTP link. And we're going to go ahead and save off our NiFi binary zip file. I created a directory called demo that I'm going to put everything in. So let's go ahead and look at that. And there it is. That's what we just downloaded off the NIFA website. So let's go ahead and uh, extract all the files out of that zip file. And it's going to take a couple of minutes. And once it extracts everything, we're going to have a NIFI directory that's going to have all the NIFI stuff in it we need to run. So let's go down here to the NiFi directory and look at some of the directory structures. This is the bin directory that has all the binaries, the batch files you need to run NiFi. This is where you're going to run it from. There's a conf directory, config directory to help you configure NiFi for your particular instance. We're going to get back to this in a minute with the NiFi.properties file. It's pretty important. And finally, there's a docs directory that contains all the NiFi documentation in case you want to read it. It's also on the website. And then the lib directory contains all the required NiFi libraries. Of note, notice that the NiFi libraries, a lot of them end in NAR. That's a NiFi thing as opposed to JAR or WAR. Let's go back to our conf directory, and we're going to edit the NiFi.properties file. And we're going to make a couple changes in here. First thing we're going to do is add a banner to our NiFi instance. So we're going to click on the NiFi UI banner.txt and put some text in here. And then we're going to go ahead and NiFi out of the box runs on port 8080. So just for a demo, let's go ahead and change that to something else. Let's make it um, 9090. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to look for the NiFi web HTTP, HTTP port of 8080 and change that to 9090. We're not running H secure yet. We'll do that in another lesson. This is just straight HTTP. And the other thing we're going to change, we're going to add something called a sensitive property key. We'll talk about that in a later, epi later uh, lesson, but let's just go ahead and type something in there for now. So again, three changes. The banner, the port, and the sensitive properties key. That's all we're changing right now in this file. Let's go ahead and save it off. And we're going to go ahead to the, our binary directory, and we're going to open up two DOS windows to that directory. And we're going to go ahead and start NiFi. Now to start NiFi, um, you, okay, you need to go to the bin directory first. Sorry about that. So let's go to the bin directory. And now we're going to go ahead and type run NiFi.bat. Hit enter, and you're off and running. NiFi is now running. Let's bring up our window, our browser window. 
and we'll go ahead and type our NIFI URL, which we set to be uh, localhost, and the port number will be 9090. Hit enter. In case you can't remember the whole URL for NIFI, it'll come up and ask you, did you really mean this? So click on the NIFI tab there, and it'll give you the whole URL up top. And let's see if it comes up. Okay, you can see localhost 9090 slash NIFI. And there's our NIFI um, GUI display. Let's bring up a DOS window just to go ahead and just uh, status it. So we can type status dash NIFI and it'll show you some information about the fact that NIFI is indeed running. Of course you could have seen that from the GUI but that's fine too. Close the window out. And again, 9090 is what we set it to be in our configuration. We also set our banner. Um, NIFI school is one at the bottom, and there's one at the top. Okay, so there's two of the changes we did right there you can see for yourself. Okay, you can see NIFI is composed of like a menu bar that controls how the processors are uh, configured and run. You can also uh, start and stop a processor here. And then there's some general admin stuff on the far right for uh, administering and configuring Niagara files. You can always click on the About button to find out what version you're running if you want. Uh, this is version 020, so we're just starting with a new version of NIFI. And of course, you can always click the Help button to get help documentation on NIFI. Here's the general graphic area where the processors will go. You can navigate via here or here. That's like a zoomed-in version. You can always close that window if you don't like it. Um, if you have a lot of processors, it's handy. This shows the status of the processors that are running the current time, anything that's, uh, that's queued up, or any of the threads that are active that are running right now. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and drag a processor down, and we're going to need to um, get a processor. You can, you, can, you can scroll down and look at the processors there and pick one out, or you can actually type something in to try and narrow it down. We're going to look for a generate processor, generate flow file. So there's our generate flow file processor. We're going to drag it down. And we have a little triangle there that says we have some problems. So we have two issues we need to fix to get this processor to start. Uh, file size, and there's another one. So we're going to go ahead and configure it. Under settings, we're going to give it a, a name. Instead of generate flow file, we're going to call it something else. How about create a flow file? We'll go ahead and apply that. And now you can see it's got a new name. Now create a flow file, but it also shows you what the name of the processor is. Let's go ahead and schedule this. Instead of running all the time, we're going to generate a flow file every 10 seconds. And of course, you can make this timer-driven or cron-driven. We're going to use timer-driven for this instance. Cron-driven means just start it at a certain time. So every 10 seconds, we'll generate a flow file. And you can see we still have our two issues. So let's go ahead and fix those. Okay, we're going to go over the properties and fix the file size. So we have to have a file size. We need to define what the file size of this generated flow file is going to be. So let's go ahead and set that to, say, 1 kilobyte. Click OK. And instead of binary data, let's make it text data that's going to generate. We'll hit OK on that. Hit apply. And now we see we're down to one thing, which is we need to define a success. So if we generate this flow file, what are we going to successfully do it? So we're going to go ahead and create a, a uh, processor that's going to let us write to the hard drive. So let's go ahead and narrow it down to files. And we want to do put file, which will let us put a file on our hard drive. And it describes what actually it does. So let's go ahead and add it. Let's tidy it up there. And now just to simply drag an arrow over to the put file from the generate. And you can it will show you on success where you're going from, which is the generate flow file, where you're going to, which is the put file. So after the flow file is generated, we're going to go to the put file. Okay, you can see we have this, the, uh, the square uh, red box, which means that that flow file is ready to go. And uh, the put file still has a triangle, and we got to fix a couple issues here, as it looks like. So let's go ahead and configure ours to put a directory to put all this this flow file in. So let's go ahead and type C in the demo directory. And then they have a thing called conflict resolution strategy. It means if the file's already there, what do you want to do? We're not going to replace it. We're not going to ignore it. We're just going to say we're going to fail. Okay, if the file's already there, what do you want to do? And then let's go ahead and close out locally. So the flow is going to end here, so we can hit these locally to auto-terminate our flow. So on if, it, if it fails or success, the flow is going to end here. And now you see we have our red square, which means that one's ready to go too. 
let's go ahead and start our generate a flow file. You can right click here if you want to um, refresh the screen. And you can see we have one file already in the queue. So every 10 seconds, we're going to get a new file generated by that processor. Now we have two. Okay. And you can see it's queued up, so we have two. Queue shows up there as two. We show we have one processor running and one processor stopped. Go ahead and refresh it. And let's go ahead up here to the uh, administrative panel. We can do a summary of all the processors that are out there and actually see which ones have a queue on them. So this one we can see that we have now we have four. Shows the size, shows the queue, and we can actually go to the actual processor that has this queue backed up by hitting the arrow here. And there it is. Let's go ahead and start this. And now we should see the queue should go down to zero, and it sure enough has. And we have two processors running now as opposed to one. Zero in the queue, zero in the queue. So every 10 seconds, we're going to generate a flow file. You can also click here on the uh, star and look at um, the processor. If you want to try and change it, you can look at what the settings are, but it's not going to allow you to change it because it's running. Same thing with the uh, resolution strategy. You can see what the values can be, but you can't change it or set it because the processor is running. You need to stop it first. You can also click usage to see how to use this particular processor. Each one's a little different as far as what properties it needs set, and this will just tell you which ones it needs. In this case, it's put file. All right, let's go over and we'll go ahead and look at one more thing here, and that's the stats. This will show you the number of bytes that have come into this particular flow file. Uh, it'll give you a status since from when we started it. Um, you can also look at the number of flow files that came in if you want, as opposed to bytes. And this shows, you know, we've had 12 or so, it looks like. Uh, the top is a zoomed in part. The bottom is the full timeline of the time the processor has been running. So you can actually zoom in and look at different parts of this um, history to get a better feel for what's going on. All right, let's stop uh, both of our processors now by just hitting the stop button and highlighting it. Refresh it. We see we have on top we have uh, two that shows they're stopped. So we're going to go ahead and start deleting our flows. So it's just as simple as highlighting them and deleting them. And now you can see that um, we refresh everything. We have nothing running, nothing stopped, nothing in the queue. Come over here if you want to stop it. We'll go ahead and hit Control C to stop our NiFi. Hit yes. And now our NiFi is stopped. One more thing, if you want to look in the um, conf directory, you'll see there's a new file there called flow.xml.gz. This is file was created by NiFi when you started it. That's where it keeps all your flow file information. And of course, you have the log directory that contains all the NiFi logs from what you've seen. Lesson two, recap. In this lesson, we learned where to go to download the latest version of the NiFi binary file. It's a zip file, actually, that we unzipped in our local hard drive area. We looked at the directories that NiFi comes with, specifically two directories, the bin directory, which contains all the scripts you'll need to start NiFi, and there's also a script in there to get the status of NiFi. We looked at the conf directory that contains all your configuration files for your specific instance of NiFi. Uh, of, of interest is the nifi.properties file, which we made a couple modifications just to show what would happen if we changed some properties in there. We added a banner so you could, and showed where the banner appeared on the nifi GUI. We changed the default port from 8080 to 9090, and then we brought up a web browser and showed that indeed we go to port 9090 localhost that nifi is there. And then we went ahead and set the sensitive properties key, which we'll talk about in a later lesson. We learned how and where to start NiFi. You basically just type in run nifi.bat. We created a simple data flow using the standard NiFi provided processors. In this case, we generated a flow file every 10 seconds. That was one kilobyte long. And it happened to be, instead of a binary file, it was a text file. And then we went ahead and stored that um, file to the local hard drive. 
We went over some data flow basics, how to start a processor, how to stop a processor, how to uh, create a processor. Uh, we looked at queues. We looked at what a queue is, how we can monitor the queues, and then how to delete some of the processors. And then finally, we learned how to stop NiFi. In this case, if you're running Windows, you just hit a Control C. For uh, Linux, it'd be a little different. I think there's a stop NiFi process in there that you do a batch file. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.silvercloudcomputing.com. There's a NiFi web page there that has an actual working demo of a NiFi process I put together. It's pretty in-depth. Um, it uses uh, JMS and some FTP stuff uh, processors. So you can go ahead and look at that. And of course, of course if you have any NiFi specific questions, please, please feel free to email me at nifi at silvercloudcomputing.com. Thanks.